Bonnie Hunter, I tracked you down at your <laughs> post office. I am. I am at a little post-World War II, early, late 40s, early 1950s post office building that's next door to my quilt retreat house. And I've made it my studio, so I can be here sewing or dealing with mail order or working at my long arm when retreaters are retreating next door. So it's working really well. Well, I got to tell you something funny, everybody. When we were setting up and what we're going to talk about and stuff, um, I said, hey, do you have any visuals? And we'll get to those in a minute. You go, yeah. And I'm thinking that you're, you're at the post office, not your oh. post office. And I'm going, oh, my gosh, your post office has a long arm in it? Yeah, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> But it's, it's an awesome workspace. I've always wanted like a loft space like Victoria would have in New York City or something. But this is Malta Wilson, Virginia. So we get a an old refurbished post office and it's the perfect space really. Let me ask you a question. Um, this just popped into my mind. Okay, my, my workspace is adjacent. Well, it's in my house, okay? Do you find you can stay more focused if you're off your personal campus and then you go into your workspace? Absolutely. And it's one of those things that I've dealt with over the past 30 plus years of having a mail order business, that it's really nice to be able to leave work at work. Nice. You, know, you almost have to force yourself to say, nope, it's Sunday. I'm not going to answer that mail till Monday. Or wow. that person needs their tracking number for their package. Well, they're not going to find it on Sunday. They can wait till Monday. So it's, it's been a way to discipline myself to make sure that I have weekends when I can have them. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Now, I think probably every quilter in the planet knows about your retreat center. But just in case, give us yeah. a cliff note notes on the whole thing. I, it's fabulous, Bonnie. Oh, the cliff notes is that when we purchase our um, mountain property up here, we have 42 acres with just a little cabin on it that we've made our permanent residence. We toured around the area and I found this large Victorian house and it, I did a double take and said, oh, that would be so great for a retreat. I've been wanting to have a retreat house for a long time. And my husband promptly said, don't even think about it. <laughs> So a year later, it's still on the market. And I said, you know, we're getting to this age. I'd like to bring things closer to me. I want to focus on relationships with the quilters, not just love them and leave them in a fly-by-night kind of situation. And so I toured the inside and fell in love. And then within, oh, six months, we purchased it. So And so yeah. what goes on there? What goes on there... Um, it, it took us two years to be ready. We just opened officially in February, and and uh, so we've taken our time at refurbishing, but it's a group retreat facility, so it's a little bit different. It's not where you can just book one room for you and your friend and, and join in and, and have breakfast. And it's not a bed and breakfast. No, it's not. Yeah. It's just a retreat facility for groups, and we sleep 12. So groups of 12 come, and we've got sewing space, and we've got a beautiful kitchen for them to fix their own meals, and we've got lots of things in this area that people may wish to see because we're close to the Blue Ridge Parkway, we're close to the Appalachian Trail. They can really leave their home life at home and just come break away. You know, that's, it's a that, wonderful thing. that's a great thing about retreats or like when I used to go to Asilomar as a student, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, I get there and go, oh, it's exactly that. You get away from your house and all of a sudden you are a quilter. You are an artist yeah. and you're, okay. Yeah. And then you go home and you got two little kids that are upset. <laughs> That's right. You're no longer the, the, the wife, the mother, yeah. the sister, the grandmother, the daughter, the, the whatever yeah. many hats that you wear. Yeah. You get to show up at retreat and just be Alex, who Alex is. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely just loving playing innkeeper. I didn't think I would. I mean, I hoped I would. But it just makes me giddy to so, have these people be so happy. So you're supposed to be in Asilomore right now teaching. And I'm not quite sure what day this is coming out on. But as was Victoria Finley Wolf. But yeah. it got canceled. And it got can You know why yeah. it got canceled, don't you? Yeah, and it's a good thing. It was really a good thing. But um, you know why, right? Yes, I know why. Tell people. I mean, yeah. do you know? Seriously. That they're seriously. using Asilomore for people who have been need to be quarantined. Did you know that? Okay. 
Yes, I did. I did. And that's that's what led Victoria and I were back and forth on conversations. What do we do? What do we do? We got to be safe. We want to be safe. Yeah. We don't want to expose those, especially of a certain demographic. Which so be we us. Found, right. That's just terrible. I know, I know. <laughs> but the news came out that that cruise ship that was stalled out with no place to park. They had moved some of those who had been exposed to the virus to a Philomar. And that was the first warning flag for me. So you know what? My son-in-law's uncle was on that ship and is still oh. in quarantine. But he's up at Travis Air Force Base, I think. Okay. He's up north. That's probably a good place. And I'm hoping that those, those, just because they were exposed doesn't mean they'll be carriers. Doesn't mean that they'll get it. So that's right. what our fingers are crossed. Right. But my real last straw was when San Jose Airport, oh. um, three TSA agents got it and exposed thousands of people and i thought yeah no i'm not flying into there that, that's and, exactly we were supposed to fly in tape and that's yeah. when justin said oh, he fly through san jose and justin goes nah, i don't think you're going to be doing that I'm like, yeah, no. fine. so the cinema made the right choice yes they did everything so empty schools though they had to um do everything to contact all the students and everything to keep everybody at home is everybody in everybody's um, best interest. Yes, yes. Now we get the time to actually relax and play at home, and we still have this wonderful uh, mode of communication. I can't imagine having something like this without being able to talk like this. I know. Or email or chat with your kids or whatever, because most of us have loved ones that are far away. Right. And, you know, so... We get to be stay at home and sew in our jammies and cook crock pot meals and try to make the best out of what could be a scary situation, but we're just going to make it a safe situation. Exactly. Very well said. Now, before we look at your stuff, which you've brought, um, how are you handling uh, the engagements that you have quilt at Quiltville in? And by the way, I didn't say Bonnie Hunter. Um, I want to say that in case people don't know your last name. And so if you want to Google about this whole thing, how are you handling the situation personally right now? Well, right now, because I was supposed to be at a Silmar, I didn't have any retreats booked until April. Okay. And I, I contacted um, the early April venues to let them know if they'd like to shift a month or two that, that we can do that. And I'm just trying to play things a couple weeks ahead of time and not have everybody shift down the calendar because, you know, that's the domino effect is a lot to deal right, with. Right, right. Um, so far, we're hopeful. We're, we're waiting until we get through the next two weeks, and then we're going to reevaluate and see. Now, I'm in southwestern Virginia, which is pretty much no man's land. There's 19 people per square mile. The, the, I know, right? The, the cattle far outnumber the, the people out here. My drive to my post office work and to the inn is seven miles. There's two stop signs in seven miles, and I rarely pass a car, even when there's not um, a virus situation. So you're naturally self-isolated where you live. We are self-isolated. So what did I do the moment I figured out that, okay, I'm not going to Silmar, what am I going to do? Yeah. I went out and adopted a puppy. What? Where, where, where is the baby? I don't have her here. She's at she's at home with with her daddy. So, but um, I had been we've been wanting a dog. We lost our dog in November, and when I found out, well, if if I'm not traveling again, it's well, what's it's that behind you? There's something behind. There's something behind you. Oh, my son's cat. Oh, okay. here. I know. It's just like E I E I O and on this farm there was a. You know uh, what though? It, it went, it's it's hiding under the table. It's my cat has never been happier because I'm home. It's fabulous. So this is this is Lola, oh. and she she is just a lover, but oh. she's uh she's very shy. But my son moved to Portland, Oregon from um. Columbia, South Carolina, and he was in a situation where he had these elder cats, uh -huh. and he take them with them. So he calls mom and says, "Mom, they're going to put them down if, if I take them to the pound, and I can't find anybody to adopt them." Come to mama. So here, yeah, you know. So I don't have grandkids; I have grand cats, <laughs> and, uh, and they've actually been really good company here, and they they tolerate the new puppy. They just go to higher ground. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let yeah. me see. Let me see some stuff. You want to see some stuff? 
Yeah. Yeah. Which show I show you first? All right. By the way, thank you so much for doing this, Bonnie Hunter. Oh, I'm thrilled. I I wanted to to do something just a little bit different, and I think this will help people. Okay. How many have leftover orphan blocks at home? <laughs> no, I've eight, never heard of that before. Eight orphan blocks. <laughs> they don't really match, but I quickly put borders on them. I'm going to quilt it up, and I'm going to use it as a um, like a patio table. Oh yeah. Proper thing. It's, it's not gorgeous, but it's not bad. No, it would be good. Now, or would you put batting in that or not? Yeah, I will. I'm okay. Put, I'm not, in fact, I'm going to use some batting scraps that I'm going to zigzag together. Right, right. To, to make good use of, of small pieces of batting. So that's a, a good thing. Cool. Small projects. Small projects are a really good way to get yourself out of a funk. I found that one. And then there's the big projects. You want to see the big ones? Well, of course we do. Okay. So we do this thing on <gasps> on my blog that is called the Leader Ender Challenge of the Year. Now this started in <laughs> July, but we cut the piece. We have a block that we want to make, and you cut the pieces for the block and you put them by your machine. And then while you're working on whatever project that it is, you just you know at the end of your chain of chain piecing, you just build these little blocks on the side, and they keep your piecing continuous. Well, you know I what, Bonnie? Of them. I think you showed us that when you were on the show. Your show, 1410, and it was a modern I scrap show. I and I think but you did. There's, there's nine seams left to go, and then this top is together. So I've got the entire top webbed. Woohoo! Explain. Hey, works, Bonnie, explain what know. webbed is, because we have new quilters here. Yeah, new quilters. Okay, so if I hold it this way. Sorry, I'm trying to do this and look at the camera. At the, at the I know, camera. I know, it's crazy. And you see that the rows are held to each other in order by the chain threads that are between the rows. Yes. So you build the quilt in columns instead of going across in rows and then joining rows. You start, and I start in the farthest left column. Uh huh. And I go down the quilt. Okay. Chain piecing everything together. So I'm chain piecing column two to column one. Okay. And then I grab column three and add it on, and column four and add it on, until the entire quilt, the rows are all completed just like this. And then I just have to fold it over. I finger press as I go. I know somebody's going to ask about, but what about the pressing? I uh -huh. finger press as I go. And then after I sew a row, I will... Uh, Take it to the ironing board. But I just fold it right sides together. Can't do this. It's too big and I can't. I know. Does it line up pretty well or do you pin? It does because I have finger pressed and the, the chain threads are where they need to be. Uh -huh. And then I can just easily pin my intersections while it's on my lap. And then I sew that and pull pins. So, you know, Bonnie, I know people do that, but you're the first person who has ever really explained it in my universe. Um, how long How long did it take you from going, because I go left to right, uh, horizontal rows, and now you're going vertical. How much of a mind bend is that to work that way? It's not very bad. I'm going to set this down. Um, okay. It's not very bad. You just... I, lay, I have a design floor, which with a new new puppy is a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Bad Zoe, bad Zoe. Um, but uh, I, I lay things out. And the reason I like um, the, the chain piecing webbing assembly for this is because if I press the block row and the sashing row and the block row and the sashing row to the sashings on, on all the rows, all the rows will nest with each other. Okay. Every other method that I've tried where people say add a sashing and a sashing and a cornerstone and then you join those together, well, that's great. But when you join the next section on, they don't nest. So this keeps the things going the way that I'm going to have. I'm going to have to watch this again and think about what you're saying. <laughs> so people yeah. just, just look, this is residing forever. Go read it. Go watch it again. Somewhere, somewhere I did a YouTube video on the webbing and, you know, it was one of those videos that was... Maybe this wasn't such a great idea because they've got a lot of me bending over in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I can tell you everybody watching this right now is really appreciating the professional um, presentation that we're giving them. <laughs> <laughs>
called keeping it real because aren't we real? We're just, I, I mean, what else can we do in, I know. In, in times like this? So my hope is to get those last nine scenes done. That's my number one job. But of course, as I am sewing those last nine scenes, I'm going to get to the end of one of those scenes and I have to have two more pieces of something to send at the end of that seam so that I can remove the piece from the machine and keep things continual. It's a little game that once you start playing, you never want to sew over a little folded over thread well, again. And that's how you got all, what do you call them, yeah. enders and starters? Leaders and enders. Enders, okay, and that's how you got it. Yeah, so what are you working on? I haven't asked you what you're oh, working I'm, on. Um, I'm doing a bunch of machine quilting. Um, machine quilting! I'm really, I'm into straight line. I'm also, um, and I've been plugging her up like crazy. I'm in Joanne Sharp's uh, watercolor class. Oh, and yeah. It's online. Yeah. I'll show you, I show this on another a live this morning, but here's my art girl. Oh, okay. oh she's beautiful. Isn't she fun? And, those eyelashes, that's the bomb. Well, get this, and then each little flower in her hair um water and grow they all say things that help you as an artist no matter what make art every day and so you can pull one up and look at it anyways that's joanne sharp i'm doing that and i'm doing live lessons online because you know we got we gotta we gotta sew we gotta create yeah and i fully believe that if anybody is feeling a little bit unsettled or not sure what to do or there are too many thoughts in their head or whatever it is. I mean, it's a simple act for me. And I told Gudrun and Erla last night about this. If I could just iron the fat quarters. Oh, I can feel my blood pressure go down. Yeah, you know? in in preparing for these online classes that are about as professional as this, I got out my fabric and I started sorting it, and it it was really a source of comfort. Yeah, it is. It you is know. Creative. Creativity can uh, smooth out a, a bunch of ruffled buttons. Yeah. So, you know, it really does. So this is our chance. Quilters have been preparing for this for decades. I know. We're ready. We're ready to do this. In fact, I just pulled out last night. This, this is, um, you asked to see, see my stash. I'm at the post office, so I had limited stash here. But this is a, a whole selection of older type um, Civil War reproduction. Yeah, yeah. And my son and his girlfriend are, are moving in together. So who knows? There may be grandchildren. Right, 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 right. But I think they need a quilt. So these were, these were I mean, it's a lot of brown. I'm in the, in the time of my life where I don't understand a lot of brown. So <laughs> we'll, we'll just, we're just going to put it together. And I pulled a whole bunch of stuff. And, and thought, you know, the, I'm going to do bigger pieces. It's a sew along that's happening on, on this Sunday. And, and I'm doing, be, I'm doing this. I'm not sure when this is going to air. Um, yeah. uh, that would be the day after International Quilting Day because I'm doing okay. a sew along on that Saturday. So hope we'll try Perfect. and get this up. Perfect. So we won't. You can you can clip that out. But there's lots of ways to participate. With many many different online groups have challenges going on. Just find one and join in. Yep. Or, Pick a UFO and challenge yourself. Pick a friend and each of you pick a UFO and challenge each other and stay in contact. I think if yes. we can stay in contact with each other, then it's all we good. We can all get through this. It's all good. It's well, Bonnie good. Hunter, thank you so much. And I'm quite, so I'm, quite, I'm quite impressed that you own a post office. Again, <laughs> where, where, how can people... How do people find you on the net if they if you aren't already in their thing? Should they just Google your name or? If they just type in Quiltville, Q U okay. I L T V I L L E, okay. they will find me. Or okay. they can they can Google my name. That will also come up. Okay. And you find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. You have a great day and thank you. You also good to see you.